Just text, I know it's a toss Oh, but I hate the fact that we lost such a The Uber pulling up on call Tell me as you trying to fall through I'ma leave it up to you What you wanna do? Look, I'm trying to spend this time with you Know we overdue what you're doing right now Right now Baby, won't you swing my way? It's been a day and I've been thinking all oh, long. I know I want you. Long time since the last time. Got a tab, we could run up. Knew you from the way, now we grown up. My look, yeah, made the realest ones nervous. But if you want it, tap in. I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crash land. We could keep the pace on slow, yeah. Don't leave me on red. Can we go back? All we have was the moment Just text, I know it's a toss Now I'm paid by the sentence Taking my time with it Baby, give me yours So I could get some butterflies trapped in your rib cage. Let me know we on the same page Can you hit a text voice, note or an emoji Waiting all day for your name on the ID So if you want it, tap in I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crash in And we could keep the face on slow All we have is the moment. Just text, I know it's a toss up. 
Conversations, debates, and advice that keep you turned up. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Princella, the queen maker in the building. Make sure we get them likes up. We got 110 eyes up in here. <laughs> Yeah, I keep it cooling. If you ain't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to your girl. Right? You got to make sure you subscribe to me. All right? Because <laughs> you missing out if you ain't a part of the fun. You hear me? <laughs> Listen, I thank y'all so much for supporting the show and being a part of the whole, the whole experience. Right? Prince Ella the Queen making in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
I ain't just no any old regular cat, right? I ain't no any old regular cat. I'm a little different from most of these hip hop YouTubers. I'm, I'm a little different from practically everybody you listen to, right? I'm a scientist at heart, right? I'm a scientist. I am a philosopher. I'm a mathematician, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a lifelong student. I'm a student of life. And I study this planet. I study human behavior. I don't just pull nothing out the crack of my anus, right? Mm -mm. That ain't how I do, right? Over here, I don't care about your feelings. I speak facts. I'm full of confidence. I'm full of self-love. And I exude that so you know how to exude it in your own life. I teach you the foundations of life so you can stand firm on the square and not let nobody knock you off of it, right? Because you ain't going to knock me off mine. And it ain't nothing you can say about me that's going to make me feel bad. Because guess what? Facts are going to support me. And if you don't like what I got to say, guess what? Dead a dough, baby. Dead a dough to the left, to the left. Right? Right? So, one of the things about science, right? Let me let you understand that science is based on observation. Right? Observation of the natural and physical world and the behavior of the natural and physical world without human interference, right? I could be, listen, I'm smart, I'm intelligent. Can't nobody tell me that I ain't. Listen, I can, I can do whatever I put my mind to and I could be a professional in any, any field. If I wanted to, I could be a doctor, right? I could be an MD, I could be a PhD, I could be a musician, Right. I can do whatever the hell I want to do because I dedicate my life to mastery. Right. So I ain't just no any old regular Joe out here or Joan out here just making random commentary. I be on facts. And lucky for you, ladies, the facts of nature is on your side. If you a male, I'm sorry it ain't on your side, which is the reason why y'all got to do all the foolishness that you doing. <laughs> right? Yep. That's why you got to do all the foolishness that you doing. So, tonight, listen, make sure you subscribe if you ain't subscribed. Make sure you tell your mama, your sister, your, 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 your cousin and all that to come over here and watch the High Power Podcast because they missing out on some true empowerment, right? Okay, this green bar that you see up above my head that say three and 20 percent, this is our high power member goal, right? On the high power member side, I do live shows exclusively on Wednesdays for my live viewers, right? Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is move one of these lives to the exclusive high power side and only give unpaid members one live and a bunch of and adrenaline rush episodes right <clears throat> that's that's the ultimate goal right and on the high power side when i do live events that you can come to you get discounts on live in-person stuff you get access to a whole lot of stuff. I'm just building that community because ultimately what I want to do is I want to incentivize people to become members of a real sisterhood, right? Because you can't actually have a community unless you're within proximity and you touching hands with somebody, right? All right? You got to bring this stuff into physical reality, right? You got to be able to network with people. That's on some stuff. You got to be able to know somebody that's on the same frequency as you that you can call on. You got to know that, right? And the only way you're going to get people on the same frequency as you is if you get people on the same mentality. See, what we do over here, we don't add. I don't add. Baby, I multiply, right? It's real simple. When you add one plus one, you get two. 
That means you get two different thought processes. You add one plus one plus one plus one, you get five different thought processes, right? I don't add, baby. I multiply over here because one times one times one times one is still one, sweetheart. So what I'm trying to do is multiply my mentality across as many women as possible. And the only way I can do that is if I show you the truth, right? Is if I show you the truth and you submit to the truth, right? You got to submit to the truth. And the more women that submit to the truth, the more powerful we can become. And we might be able to shift the effects of this screwed up world around, right? Because the, the key is to neutralize the negativity, right? And the only way you're going to do that is by bowing down to the truth. Luckily, the truth is on your side, ladies, unless you a boy mom, right? And you attach to your boys and you don't know because now you're torn between a rock and a hard place. You don't know because you know what? I told my live, my Wednesday members that when you are pregnant with a boy, 64% of women who have boys, DNA, the boy's DNA, the Y chromosome, leaves remnants in the woman's body, making her self-sacrifice for her sons, right? Right? Yeah. So it, it, it makes it even harder for you if you got boys and then it make it even more hard. <laughs> it make it even more hard if you got somebody shooting some sperm inside your body. Yeah. Chemical warfare, biological warfare. If you if you ain't a member on the high power side, you going you to miss that episode. That's one you want to go watch. That's one that you want to go watch. Right? Right. But tonight, anthropology, right? Thank you, Jehanetta Miller. Donated $20 to the Super Chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh. I got to, I got to, I got to kill this right here. Because we got to, I got to get my chimes on hold on yeah yeah okay so listen tonight what we gonna do let me show you i got proof listen to me you need to bow down to nature the where humans that messed up let me tell you something okay we got four we, we got a new member on the high power side so let's see if we can get 11 more members with in the next week Right. Next week, 11 more members. This is a real community that we building. Screw all of this popularity stuff. It ain't about popularity. It's about some real tangible stuff. But anyway, listen to me. Anthropology. We have to study animals because the, the thing about animals is they don't have rational thought to manipulate and alter their behavior in the wild. What you experience or what you observe is raw dog facts of nature, right? So what we looking into today is bonobos, bonobo monkeys who are female dominated. Bonobos operate in a matriarchal setup. Chimpanzees operate in a patriarchal setup. So, in raw nature, I'm going to show you the differences between a matriarchy, a true matriarchy, and a patriarchy. And I'm going to show you that males are the same and the systems that they run are identical. And you, as a woman, are out of your rabbit mind for supporting a patriarchy. Because a patriarchy does not benefit you or 
your children or society or the planet. Mother Nature, Mother Earth, tell you what it is. But you're afraid to bow down and accept the reality that God is a woman. You scared. You scared. But I'm going to show you tonight as we look at primates who share 97% to 98% of the human genome, the human DNA. These are your closest relatives. So if you need to take advice from any mother person, you better take it from your closest relatives. Stop listening to males and take it from nature because nature got all the answers. All right. So let's get ready to get this show on the road. Let's get this show on the road. All right. So some generous apes may explain the evolution of human kindness. Amaya, no ma'am, don't start that. Do not start that. Go sit down. All right. So it's feeding time at Lola Yabonabo, a sanctuary for Bonabos. Caretaker Bernard Sangu shouts in French as he gets ready to distribute a morning snack. The air fills the piercing shrieks of Bonabos nearby tell their friends in the forest that pineapple is coming. Right. Soon, more than a dozen bonobos have assembled near the grassy perimeter of their enclosure. With chimpanzees, the prospect of food can lead to aggression. The prospect of food can lead to aggression. Now, Keep in mind, I have read research papers dealing with testosterone and aggression. Testosterone is directly linked to aggression in males. So even in a patriarchal setup in chimpanzees, resources lead to competition and aggression. Bonobos and chimpanzees share 98% of the human genome. Now, I'm going to put that right there on the screen so you can see that, okay? I want to make sure you see that. Oh, I wish this thing stopped opening up all these folders. I can't even find my... Sh all right. Bonobos look like smallest chimpanzees with whom they share 99.6% of their DNA. And both of these great apes share 98.7% of their DNA with humans, making them our closest living relatives. Now, this is important because bonobos and chimpanzees are practically the same. But they different because bonobos are female dominated and chimpanzees are male dominated. So just keep that in mind. They the same, but different. 
exactly like human beings, right? The female and the male is the same, but different. Okay. Back to what we're looking at. So with chimpanzees, the prospect of food can lead to aggression. But bonobos take a different approach, says Susie Quitwenden, a biologist at Lola, for whom English is her third language. As you see, there is many action of sex, many negotiations, she tells me. So that makes peace. Sexual bonds make peace. Now, this is important for you to know, because if you was in, if you were in my private Wednesday live, you got the scientific breakdown of why homosexual homosexuality is deemed a sin in the Bible. Remember, the Bible and all of these patriarchal religions are male dominated. Males created it for themselves, right? But when they demonized or made homosexuality a sin, they didn't make it a sin for males. Because in in Greece, in Rome, they praised Male homosexuality, right? Right? They did. But they demonized it for women. Why? Bonobo monkeys and chimpanzees share 98.7% of human DNA. Which makes them very, very similar. Bonobo monkeys are a sexual group and that creates a bond. Keep that in mind. I want you to keep that in mind as I continue to read. As you see, there is many action of sex. Many negotiation, she tells me. So that makes peace. This sort of harmony is why, for more than a decade, scientists from around the world have been coming to this sanctuary just outside of Kenosha or Kinshasa along the banks of the Lukaya River. The researchers think bonobos may help explain how humans evolve the capacity to be nice at least some of the time. Same genes, different behavior. Bonobos look like smallest chimpanzees with whom they share 99.6% of their DNA. And both of these great apes share 98.7% of their DNA with humans making them our closest living relatives. What intrigues scientists is that bonobos and chimps often behave very differently, despite their genetic similarity. What's more, human behavior seems to incorporate aspects of both species. For examples, chimpanzees tend to rely on cunning and competition. Listen to me. For example, chimpanzees tend to rely on cunning and competition. Patriarchal systems such as capitalism, socialism, communism, fascism, all have incorporated male nature, which is rooted in what? Cunning and competition.
they com males compete for resources. Women are a resource. So males compete for women. Males compete for territory. That is the nature of a male, whether it is in a, in a group of chimpanzees, whether it's in fish, right? Whether it's in beetles or whether it's in spiders, it's the same behavior in the male. And with their patriarchal setup, that's how it operates. So chimpanzees tend to rely on cunning and competition, while bonobos emphasize cooperation and sharing. While bonobos emphasize cooperation and sharing. This is the natural behavioral patterns of females. So when you are looking at women and how they're operating, they are operating competitively because they've been indoctrinated with male philosophy. They've been indoctrinated with male philosophy rooted in competition and aggression and all that stuff. It is not the nature of a woman to compete. While bonobos emphasize cooperation and sharing. The two species also diverge when it comes to leadership says Dr. Jonas Mukamba, the head veterinarian at Lola. Chas Bonobo, he says, he tells me, it is the females who dominate and it is a female who is the chief of the group. This was the nature of the planet and this is the position that women held all over the globe at one point. It is females who dominate. And it is a female who is chief of the group. Mother Nature. Mother Earth. What the bees do. Can somebody tell me what the bees do again? Let me see if I can pull that up real quick just so y'all can see the bees, the bees. Just so y'all can see the bees again. Tell me what the bees do. It's that time of year when the female bees kick all the male bees out of the hive and they don't let them back in so they either starve or freeze to death. Since mating season is over and the male bees don't do any work inside the hive, they are really just extra mouths to feed in the winter when food is scarce. So the female bees have to kick the male bees out for the good of the colony and so the bees can survive until spring. Mm. Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Bonobo monkeys, the female is who dominates. That's one reason meals at Lola Yabonabo are so peaceful. Quitwenda tells me as we watch a group of Bonobos gather for what will soon turn into a sort of polyamorous picnic. Ninety eight point seven percent of their DNA is shared with human beings. Why are women not acting like this? Because they have been indoctrinated and programmed with male philosophy. But this is the nature of women. She points out to the alpha female. This is Simon Dwa, Big Mom, T. 
tough mom. But they try to demonize you for being big mom, tough mom in a patriarchal system. And you dumb enough to listen to them. She says, as you can see, she is in the front just to show that she is very concerned by all organization in the group. To be an effective leader, <laughs> you must have compassion, sympathy, and understanding. It ain't about competition when you lead. It's about cooperation, sympathy, and understanding. At least that's what Napoleon Hill says. At least that's what General Patton says. At least that's what Dale Carnegie say. Simwendwa is smaller than many of the males around her. I hope you're paying attention. Semendwa is smaller than many of the males around her. This is the same with human beings. Many of you ladies are smaller than the males around you. But if a male were to become aggressive, all the females would rally around her to chase him into the forest. You are not operating like this because you have allowed males to indoctrinate a poisonous psychological program into you to divide and conquer women by age, by ethnicity, by size and skin color. So a woman, a single woman is not a woman without a male. I keep telling you a single woman is a woman without a community of motherfucking women. But y'all don't hear me, though. You don't hear me, though. You think I'm just pulling some shit out of my ass, huh? They done taught you to believe and not to think. They done taught you to shut your eyes off from observation and listen to, what a, uh, listen to the dreams that a motherfucker sell you and you dumb enough to buy it. Instead of turning to where the wisdom is it. The wisdom is in mother nature. Mama been trying to protect you. And you've been spitting in mama face. Hey. Sharing with strangers. One way that Bonobos differ from other great apes is in their uh, eagerness to sh Are you a woman tired of getting the short end of the stick in relationships? Are you feeling frustrated, lost, and confused doing everything you've been told to do to get and keep a man, yet you still get used, abused, and drained? Or are you tired of people telling you what to do, but not how to do it? Love yourself, know your worth, but no instructions on how? then don't worry, because the five components of love will help you discover the secrets of true love and open your eyes to a world filled with delusions and short-term regretful relationships that can potentially ruin your life. Even if you're already engaged in a relationship and feel lost and unable to understand whether you're truly being valued or not, the five components of love will guide you toward a secure and healthy relationship, not only with others, but yourself most importantly. Remember, it's never too soon, never too late. 
you need to choose whatever makes you strong and happy. Visit www.princellathequeenmaker.com to sign up for the Five Components of Love workshop held every Sunday. I I ain't played my commercial in a minute. I kind of forgot that thing was coming on. <coughs> Bless me. Make sure if you ain't got the Five Components of Love, you get that book because I'm going to show you what love is. What you believe love is ain't what it is. All right? But make sure we get the likes up. We got 287 people up in here. 179 likes. Go ahead and get the likes up. But I want you to know, you in the right place, baby. You in the right place to build this type of connection with, with other women, right? You need to stop being scared because the true protector and the true provider is women. It ain't males. They lied to you, baby. The male's nature is not providing and protecting. They lied to you. And the reason why your relationships ain't shit, ain't worth a damn, is because you sitting up here waiting on males to do some shit that ain't in their damn nature. I'm editing it now. I'm on chapter seven, Queen. I mean, Roxy. I look forward to April, <clears throat> sometime in April being the release. Once I finish editing it, I'm going to let y'all know that I'm sending it to print. Once I send it to print, I have more of a exact date. But just know that I, I projected by April. All right. I decided to I decided to edit it myself because my editor came back and hit me with five grand. She was like, I'm charging you five thousand dollars to edit your book. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Right. I had somebody else that was going to charge me less, but I didn't trust the process. So I was like, you know what? I'm not no dummy. I used to have to edit my own damn papers in college. I edit my shit. I just didn't feel like doing it. But maybe I needed to do it. So. It's cool. <laughs> I'm on chapter seven. I work on this shit every day. Yeah. So anyway. Back to what we was talking about. If you ain't a member of the high power tier, you need to become a member. Let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can hit 15 new members by the end of next week, right? That's the goal. We got 11 more to go. We, we, we got four new members, right? Sharing with strangers. One way that Bonobos differ from other great apes is in their eagerness to share. Women were given dominion over the planet. And when women were given dominion, there was an abundance because the job of the women was to manage life, to preserve life, to nurture life. That was her job. So there was always enough to go around because women, it is not in the nature of women to compete. It is in the nature of women to share because there is an abundance. They are not competitive for territory, right? So they have an eagerness to share. This is female domination, baby. Something that has been documented in a series of experiments here at the lab. The experiments were carried out by a team that included Quitwenda and Brian Hare, a professor of evolutionary anthropology at Duke University. They were done in Lola's Bonobo lab. 
a building that features room-sized cages and a place for scientists to observe what happens inside them. In one experiment, the scientists put two bonobos in adjacent rooms. Then they gave one of the animals a plate of prized food, like bananas or apples, which have to be imported. The fruit plate was topped with a type of cream Quatenda calls bonobo sauce. The bonobo with food was given a choice, eat alone or use a special key to let in their neighbor. In our mind, we thought that because a nice food they would eat, they would first eat, Quintenda says. But we were surprised to see that roommate is more important than favorite food. This is the nature of women. Bonobos share 98.7% of their DNA with humans. So this is the reason why women get upset when a male tries to separate kids just because he ain't the daddy and bring one child food in front of the others because it's the nature of a fucking woman to share. It is the nature of a male to divide and conquer. So this is the behavior of the female. Later, the scientists repeated the same experiment with three bonobos, one of whom was a stranger. This time, the bonobo with food usually shared with the stranger first, then invited the friend to join in. It takes a village to raise a child. The community has always been of women. And this is where, when a person moved into a new neighborhood, we welcomed them. We welcomed the strangers with housewarming gifts and introduced ourselves because that is the nature of a woman. But now in this individualized time, which was created by whom? You are disconnected from the people around you. You are stronger together than you are apart. And they have made you single women. They have made you single and vulnerable. Easy to conquer, but you got to understand that sex is the most powerful energy on the planet. Sex is the most powerful energy on the planet. Let me just read one little bitty part here. Chapter 11, Think and Grow Rich, The Mystery of Sex Transmutation. Sex desire is the most powerful of all human desires. Sex is the most powerful of all human desires. When women get together in a group, their menstrual cycles connect and align, and it aligns with the moon. Women are connected to this planet, and they are connected to this universe the sin of homosexuality was targeted at women because there was a powerful bond created by women who were intimate with each other. 98.7% of Bonobo DNA is shared with human beings. And this social system that Bonobos have created have created a powerful Female dominated union that neutralizes aggressive males.
Later, the scientists repeated the experiment with three bonobos, one of whom was a stranger. This time, the bonobo with food usually shared with the stranger first, then invited the friend to join in. In another study, scientists showed that bonobos are willing to help one another obtain food even if they know they won't get to share it. This generosity with food does not extend to tools, though. Apparently, selfless behavior may seem odd from an evolutionary perspective. That is, if you're looking at it from a male lens. Because most of the scientists who look into to nature and behavior, they're looking at it from a male perspective. Darwin was a male. And the male has a hard wire for survival of the fittest. That is not actually the nature of the woman, though, or the female. The female don't have to, quote unquote, be the fittest. So there. The female typically just exists. The male is the one that has to do work. (laughs) But scientists believe it paved the way But scientists believe it paved the way to the sort of large scale cooperation that has helped Homo sapiens outlast other early humans like Homo erectus. And this sort of cooperation has allowed our species to share new ideas, create vast nations and explore other planets. That is males capitalizing, right, and incorporating some of the wisdom of women into their competitive, patriarchal ways for their selfish desires. This ain't got nothing to do with humans sharing because humans are not motherfucking sharers. They operate under a competitive system like fucking capitalism, right? And backbiting, right? Competition. This is why women don't need to be fighting over males. Males ain't got a goddamn thing to offer but destruction. The fuck you fighting over penis for, right? Because you so emotionally broken down and you just need somebody to stroke your ego and make you feel valuable and important when the creator made you valuable and important independently of a damn male. So you willing to fight another woman over destruction? Yeah, make it make sense. Please make it make sense. A lab in the forest. Research at Lola Yabonabo has produced more than 75 published studies. Scientists keep returning because the DRC is the only place on earth where these animals still live in the wild. And this sanctuary provides a unique place to study their behavior in a naturalistic setting. What did I tell you science was, ladies? The systematic study of the behavior of the natural and and physical world through observation and experiment. 
You observe, you see with your damn eyes what is going on in Mother Nature minus human interference. And sometimes with human interference to see how they would respond to artificial stimuli. How nature is going to respond to an artificial setting. They got you believing in religion while they, while they got the facts of life. While they study the facts to manipulate human behavior, you sitting up here believing in some bullshit. Right? You sitting up here believing in bullshit when they getting the real through science. Right? Lola was found nearly 30 years ago by Claudine Andre, a Belgian whose father was a veterinarian in Kinshasa. In 1991, while working at the Kinshasa Zoo, Andre looked into the eyes of a bonobo, she says, and fell in love with this species. After Lola moved into its current home, once a summer residence for former President Mobutu Sesisiko, Andre began hosting scientists from countries, including the USA, Japan, and Germany. Over the years, scientific research has been able to document many of the Bonobo behaviors that Andre and the Lola staff see every day. I want to show you this picture. Nature. Nope. Not bad. Okay. For example, Andre has often said that Bonobos are full of empathy. Bonobos are full of empathy. What did I tell you that testosterone does to the male? Testosterone lowers empathy in males. Bonobos are full of empathy. Testosterone decreases empathy and drives aggressive behavior. It drives competition. This is what testosterone do. These are inverse behavioral patterns. Female-dominated bonobos, male-dominated chimpanzees. We're going to get to the chimpanzees in a moment, right? But let's continue listening to these bonobos, right? And sure enough, an Italian team found that if one bonobo yawns, others will yawn too. A behavior closely associated with empathy. Research also supports Andre's belief that bonobos have a keen understanding of what's going on in another individual. In another individual's mind and when that individual wants to help them. I got something in a book that I want to quickly point out. I want to I want to point this out. Let me see. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can find this. It's kind of, it's 
it's kind of dark up in here. I might have to turn my little light on for a second. I will find this. I'm going to find this in just a second. But I want to read this to you. So I'm going to come back to this a little bit later on in this show. But I want to tell you what happens with males in trying to decode um, faces, human faces, right? Or, or, or emotions on the face. I want to get into that, right? So just let's keep this in mind, okay? If y'all don't mind, put a pen in it. Um, in their book, Survival of the Friendliest, published in 2020, Brian Hare and Vanessa Woods describe an experiment in which a researcher would hide a treat under one of two upside down cups. Then they invited several different animal species to figure out which cup hid the treat. Chimps, despite their cleverness, just kept choosing one of the cups at random. Just to go to show you how it taught it. <laughs> the male is. <laughs> oh my God. Chimps, despite their cleverness, just kept choosing one of the cups at random. But bonobos and dogs almost immediately learned to look to the scientists for a gesture indicating the right cup. Don't that sound interesting? <laughs> One study even found a structural difference between the brains of bonobos and chimps. The difference involved circuits controlling social and emotional behaviors. What all the science suggests is that bonobos have evolved in a way that predisposes them to sharing, tolerance, negotiation, and cooperation. Now, what I will go back to is I'm going to go back to this book and I'm going to go to this page, right? I'm going to go to this page dealing with dealing with love, right? No, dealing with anger. I'm sorry, dealing with anger. Women are more likely to use words to get what they want while preserving social harmony. They may be slower to act out of anger than men because their orbital frontal cortex the brain's emotional control center is relatively larger than their amygdala. Okay. University at Montreal researchers found that women are better than men at reading facial expressions and tone of voice which may help with fostering relationships. Women pick up subtle signs of sadness 90% of the time, whereas men pick up such signs 40% of the time. Notes Luan Benzeline in her book, The Female Brain. One study even found structural differences between the brains of bonobos and chimps. What all the science suggests is that bonobos have evolved in a way that predisposes them to sharing tolerance, negotiation, and cooperation. <clears throat> Those are all traits you can see in humans on a good day. These would be all traits that you would see in women if 
and only if they had not been indoctrinated with poisonous patriarchal philosophies that teach them to compete against each other because competition is not in the nature of a woman, but it is in the nature of a male. Women have adapted to an artificial stimulus, an artificial environment that was created by males. Okay. Humans can be a fantastic bonobo with a big heart or a very dangerous warrior. She says, we are mixed. Not really. You see, even when you, see this is what happens when you listen to people or even read the research of people who are stuck in one discipline. These people have not, you, all they study is this. So they can shallowly, right, compare what they see on human service, but they haven't dug deep into philosophy. These people don't know much about philosophy and the effects of human behavior. They don't know any other area, so they can't really connect the dots. They can only look and see through the expert lens of the discipline they're looking at and then shallowly compare what they see on the surface. We're not really mixed. That's not, we're not even operating in our nature, right? Because this now we're talking about sociology here. When I, when I speak about nature, now we're talking about sociology. And then when we talk about the individual's behavior, we're talking about psychology, right? These are different fields that you have to connect the dots to to create a big picture. Everybody has a piece of the pie, and they think they got the whole answer. You have to connect the dots of all the pieces. Right? Lessons from a close relative. It's been about six million years since the death of the last common ancestor we shared with chimps and bonobos. Since then, we humans have channeled our inner bonobo to share and cooperate on a massive scale. Did we really do that? Did we really do that? No. It just appears that we did. But that's a topic for another discussion. But we've often acted more like chimps. Uh-oh. But we've often acted more like chimps. Why? Because chimpanzees are male dominated and humans have created a male dominated system globally, right? Which incorporates the male's nature into its philosophies and they have poisoned women and indoctrinated them to behave exactly like the male. So she say, hey, we've been acting more like chimps whose murder rate, listen to this, listen to this, God damn it. We've acted more like chimps whose murder rate in the wild is comparable to our own. Even when the male is running stuff in the wild, he behaves the same way. But you believe God is a man. Somebody shared something with me earlier today with young Pharaoh five years ago. And I'm finna play for you what young Pharaoh said on this podcast five 
years ago. What, what mark is it? 3408 to 3550, 3530, 3430. Okay, hold on. Let me play it. 30. Well, that's not the way it should be. 3408. 3408. 30. Okay. Let me let me turn this around. Listen to what young Pharaoh say. I guess I ain't got to I got to turn the, the phone around. Hold on. And now, okay. Let's make turn my phone up. Okay. So our religions are created and black women were deities at all around the world. All around the world. We ain't gonna say all around the world. And the Caucasian came and he said it's a man's world. And what he began to do was to pillage our spiritual system and by giving us caste system and hierarchical systems that put man first. So any religion you go to, including the Bible, okay, God was a woman, uh, a woman first, and they turned him to a man. And I just showed you in Islam with the origins of the word to give you a little juice. And the last, you know, dagger we're going to put in Islam is, you know, they have a, a, a three-letter word spelled R-H-M, which is Ruhum. And Ruhum in Islam means womb. And they got a prayer that they do. And I don't speak Arabic, so you ain't going get to it, get it fluent. But they ask to seek mer mercy within the Ruhum of Allah. And Ruhum means womb. So if Allah is a man, why would you be asking to seek refuge within the womb of Allah? And it's because it was Allah first before conquestors came over there and played you. So, you know, today if you're a religious person, you've been tricked. And I'm not here to play with you about that. I'm not here to sugarcoat it because it's only so long that you can allow something to go on before you get tired. And it's like, you know, we are hard on stuff that's not important and we're easy on stuff that is. So, you know, these kids out here dying every day in these streets, and that don't concern nobody. You know what I'm saying? And then we want to be hired on them and say, I'm, oh, you're going to jail, you're a criminal. And we want to be hired on them because nobody paved the way for them. Because we, you know, the elders was busy doing what they was doing, you know, Cadillacs and all the stuff y'all was doing in there. All right. So, <laughs> listen, listen. They done tricked your ass hard. I mean, they done tricked you hard, right? Putting males who at their nature, even in the fucking wild, are doing the same things males are doing here. So you're trying to, women are sitting up here waiting on males to do some shit that is not in their nature at all. But we've acted more like chimps whose murder rate in the wild is comparable to our own. When it comes to behaviors like violence against members of our own species, this is the male's nature. And you have been tricked to think that males have been programmed by white supremacy to act violent. And, baby, this they nature and they run in the goddamn world. You have put a chimpanzee at the head of all of the patriarchal goddamn religions. You have put the chimpanzee at the head of all of the economic systems. You have suppressed the woman. You have suppressed the bonobo and indoctrinated the bonobo with chimpanzee mentality. But we've acted more like chimps whose murder rate in the wild is comparable to our own when it comes to behaviors like violence against members of our own species. You have allowed males 
to be the community and you wondering why they killing their children. You you were never supposed to be living with no goddamn male. The nuclear family is a fucking lie. It's a lie. This is why you keep getting unalive by your males in the community. It ain't no damn white supremacy. This they damn nature. Humans do not share Bonobo's assumption that every stranger is a potential friend. You can't because it's a male dominated society and women have been indoctrinated with male dominated philosophies. That's why humans don't think like Bonobos who operate in their nature without toxic philosophies by chimps. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Nature comes first. Philosophy or human programming comes second. Nature, biology comes first. Psychology comes second. Biology comes first. Psychology comes second. In that order, biology, psychology, then sociology. Biology, psychology, sociology. Mm-mm-mm. Humans do not share Bonobo's assumptions that every stranger is a potential friend. They do in Bonobo nature because it's female dominated without the influence of chimpanzee philosophy. Studies show we may not even consider a stranger fully human if they belong to a group perceived as as other and threatening. This is chimpanzee philosophy of divide and conquer and gangs. Males create gangs. Remember when we analyzed the, 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 the boys in the house, right? Remember when we analyzed the boys, the 10 boys that was put in the house versus the 10 girls that was put in the house. And within two days, the boys had already started separating into gangs, but the girls didn't. Humans. Right. Are run by chimpanzee mentality, which has placed fear and they have adapted to the environment of the aggression and violence that males have put into the environment. And since your since it's about self-preservation Everybody has adapted to the reality that they have to preserve their own lives by looking at everybody as a potential threat because males have run rampant in the fucking world. It's run by chimpanzees. Tell me that it ain't. Please tell me that it ain't. What then, when that happens, scientists say, we tend to suppress empathy and embrace cruelty. The problem is males and their aggressive, violent nature. And they want to say it's Miss Andre because I had a dude I literally had a dude on my YouTube comments. What did he say? Listen to me. Let me see if I could pull it up real quick. Screenshot. Let me go to screenshot. Let me let me let me remind you if I didn't if I didn't tell you what he said. Screenshots. This was a couple days ago. Give me a second. Let me find it real quick. 
shouldn't be that far. Should not be that far up. I ain't took that many screenshots. there let's see well, I did take I did take quite a few screenshots but this one is important I want you to hear what the male said out of his own words white boy said this find it i'm gonna find it because i know i got this thing did i how many I, I i must screenshot a lot of i screenshot a lot of doggone comments from these folks and because i have every intention on talking about it i do have every intention on talking about it but then i'll never go back um because i'd be so busy doing stuff but i'm i'm, I'm eventually find it but i'm gonna tell you what he say i'm gonna tell you what he says um um, what just, uh, I'm a paraphrase off of memory and then eventually I find it, but he said, and I quote, I understand what you are saying, but what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to hate what I naturally am? So listen to me. He say, am I supposed to hate because what he's, he's admitting that what I'm saying about male nature is facts. But then he turns around and asks me, am I supposed to hate what I am? So when males hear this shit about their nature, they know this shit sound fucked up. They know it's fucked up. And they hate what they're hearing. They hate the mirror that's being shown to them. So they project their own hatred of self onto you and say that you hate men. They look at me and say, I hate men, right? I see the Crimson Cure. She called herself doing a video on some shit that I said. Wonderful. I'm glad you're doing it, right? Right. I'm glad you're doing it because it's all about so-called man hate. But when did the truth become hate? I'm supposed to love the fact that you are a threat to my life. I'm supposed to love the fact that you are a threat to the community, that you are a threat to my children. Huh? We supposed to love that. We supposed to embrace the fear that you put into the hearts of those around you? Really? Hmm. What that when that happens, scientists say we tend to suppress empathy and embrace cruelty. Human cruelty is something Yvonne Velatana, a caretaker at Lola, Lola Yabonabo, has seen up close. Give you a picture. This is a pretty picture. Beautiful picture. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful monkey. Velatana fled Angola more than 20 years ago to escape a civil war that would eventually kill more than 500,000 people. Since then, she's lived in the Dominican Republic or Dominic, I mean, the 
the the DRC, the Republic of Congo. What what what, what is it? DRC. I remember, forgot. A nation where decades of armed conflict has led to millions of deaths. So, the reason why you got a bunch of school shootings is not because of guns. It's because you've given chimpanzees. <laughs> You gave chimpanzees motherfucking semi-automatic rep, uh, weapons, right? You give chimpanzees semi-automatic weapons. You give chimpanzees fucking bombs and all kind of stuff. <laughs> but you believe God is a man. And you wonder why God is the, the, the villain of the Bible who then killed over two million motherfuckers in the Bible. You believe Allah is a fucking man. And the nature of a male is violence. And you wonder why the world fucked up. It's because you believe in a male God. That's why. Vela Tona has raised children of her own and served as a surrogate mother to more than 20 Bonobos. She's seen both the chimp and Bonobo sides of human behavior. What people can learn from Bonobos, she tells me through an interpreter, is that war and violence are not inevitable. That we, like Bonobos, have the capacity to resolve conflicts through other means. Bonobos are female dominated. The problem is male philosophies and male nature running the motherfucking planet. And women have been brainwashed to wait for males to provide and protect instead of standing up and taking the responsibility that the almighty creator gave to her. This your job. But you sitting back watching males do this to your families, do this to the communities, and you don't do shit. You don't link up with other women. Soon as you get a boyfriend, you abandon your doggone female friends and you go chase dick. Right? You baby your sons. You worship your sons and shit on women and shit on little girls. You are the doggone problem. It's you and your belief systems. That's allowing this world to be destroyed and your answers exist in nature. The almighty, the almighty mother earth, the almighty mother nature. And you still won't bow down to what the creator has shown you. The creator is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but humans are. The problem, the reason why you're confused because you ignore the facts, you ignore what your eyes show you, and you keep believing lies. That's the confusion. You believe bullshit that's been sold to you instead of opening up your eyes and looking what looking at what's right in front of you. God is not the author of confusion, but men are. I don't give a damn what nobody say about Princella. Come and think you can talk to me. Come and think you can challenge me and I'm going to light your ass up with some facts. Right? And if you ain't trying to hear facts, I ain't trying to talk to you. Because you can't fuck with me. You ain't as smart as me. Yeah, I'm going to let you know you ain't as smart as me. Don't come fucking with me. Right. 
So, I got another one that I want to read. Let's see. I had it pulled up. Let's see. Oh, man. This shit been fucked up. Oh, man. Hold on. Pull up a nut. Sucker, sucker, sucker. Let's see. American, let's see. Should I get the American Museum of Natural History? Okay. All right, so let me pull up this one. Bonobo genome compared with the chimpanzees and human genome, right? Let me let me check and see what the comment section is saying. I want to see what y'all talking about real quick. Right. Let's see what we got here. The universe gave me a daughter because she knew I was about to lose a mother. It was a difficult time, but my baby girl now 10 is almost her reincarnation. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Right. Don't nobody want no smoke. Crimson, Crimson, whatever her name is, do not want no smoke with me. Right? I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to play with none of these folks. Right? That's why I'm in my... Y'all don't see me going to nobody. Y'all don't see me going over nobody channel fucking with them, do you? Right? I stay in my own lane because... The reality is this kind of underground. This this like the underground railroad, y'all. This is the underground railroad, baby. And I can free you if you let me. I can free you if you let me. I'm Harriet Tubman 2.0, right? I'm Sojourner Truth 2.0. I'm Noah's Ark 2.0, right? So that means what I'm talking about ain't going to be mainstream, right? Because the truth... <laughs> <laughs> the truth just don't seem to to draw traction like that because I got the key, baby. I didn't connect the dots. I didn't figure this whole goddamn thing out from the rooter to the goddamn tutor. I didn't figure this whole thing out. I didn't figure love out. I didn't figure relationships out. I didn't figure out the true God. I didn't figure out the war on this planet. I didn't figure all this shit out. It's all I do is think about this stuff 24-7. And I got it figured out, and I can convey it in a way that can't nobody else do it, right? That's why I'm not going over there, because they all talking bullshit. And that shit sell, that make money, right? But it ain't no damn solution, and it don't save women's lives, right? I got to say, I'm here to save your life. I'm here to create a real sisterhood, right? I'm here so you don't feel like you lonely, right? Like you the only one thinking like that. I'm creating a community where you got other people to truly communicate with that share your mind. We do personal development. We trying to put each other on, right? Get the bag. Let's go travel. Let's go. Man, forget all this shit that they talking about. Leave these pick me's with these sorry ass dudes. Fuck them. Let them go. Right? The Bonobo genome compared with the chimpanzee human genome. Let me pull that up. Damn. They can't fuck with me. I can't wait till I get some, some real speaking engagement. I want to talk to me some scientists. I want to talk to me some psychologists, some doctors. I want to talk to all of them, right? <laughs> I'm going to manifest that. Some, some real... Some real powerful people is what I want to talk to, right? Get me on a get me on a national platform, right? Let's see, all right. Bonobo genome compared with chimpanzee and human genome. Pull that up. I'm gonna make sure I got the the right thing. Same thing. It is the same thing. All right. Abstract. Except all cookies. Okay. All right. Abstract. Scientific paper. 
You know, we when we pull up stuff, we got to pull it up, baby. We got to pull up research, right? Fuck what these folks out here talking about, man. Fuck what they talking about. Let's 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 pull the facts, right? Two African apes are the closest living relatives of human beings, the chimpanzee and the bonobo. Although they are similar in many aspects or respects, bonobos and chimpanzees differ strikingly in key social and sexual behaviors. And for some of these traits, they show more similarity with humans than with each other. Here we report the sequencing and assembly of the bonobo genome to study its evolutionary relationship with the chimpanzee and human genomes. We find that more than 3% of the human genome is more closely related to either the bonobo or the chimpanzee genome than they are to each other. These regions allow various aspects of the ancestry of the two ape species to be reconstructed. In addition, many of the regions that overlap genes may eventually help us understand the genetic basis of phenotypes that humans share with one of the two apes to, to the exclusion of the other. Whereas chimpanzees are widespread across equatorial Africa, bonobos live only south of the Congo River in the, Dominic, uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's what it is, the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. As a result of their relatively small and remote habitat, bonobos were the last ape species to be described and are the rarest of all apes in, ca in captivity. As a consequence, they have until recently been little studied. It's interesting. They, all, they It is known that whereas DNA sequences in humans diverged from those in bonobos and chimpanzees five to seven million years ago, DNA sequences in bonobos diverged from those in chimpanzees around two million years ago. Bonobos are thus closely related to chimpanzees. Moreover, comparison of a small number of autosomal DNA sequences has shown that bonobo DNA sequences often fall within the variation of chimpanzees. Bonobos and chimps are highly similar to each other in many respects. However, the behavior of the two species differs in important ways. For example, male chimpanzees use aggression to compete for dominance, rank, and obtain sex. Do that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Hold on. Let me go back to my other research paper. Let me go back to my other research paper. This one right here. Let's connect the dots, baby, because that's what I'm I'm a I'm a professional dot connector, right? I am a professional dot connector. Atavistic residues of aggressive behavior prevailing in animal life determined by testosterone remain attenuated in man and suppressed through familial and social inhibitions. However, it still manifests itself in various intensities and forms from thoughts, uh, anger, verbal aggressiveness, competition, dominance, behavior to physical violence testosterone plays a significant role in the arousal of these behaviors mani behavioral manifestations in the brain centers involved in aggression and on the development of the muscular system that enables their realization testosterone damn it And what did it say about the chimpanzee again? For example, male chimpanzees use aggression to compete for dominance, rank, 
and obtain sex, and they cooperate to defend their home range and attack other groups. Does that sound like human males or not? 98.7% DNA shared between humans and goddamn chimpanzees. But this who you worship though. Biology first. You research biology first. Then you research psychology. Then you go to sociology, biology, psychology, and sociology to connect the dots of a full picture. Psychology is about the individual. Sociology is about the group. You need all three of these to come to a conclusion about behavior. Crimson Cure, you ain't, you can't fuck with me. Kevin Samuels, you couldn't fuck with me. Andrew Tate, can't none of y'all fuck with me. Y'all ain't smart. You don't read. You're sensationalist. Get your bag. Get your, get your subscribers up. Do what you got to do, right? But if you want the truth, baby, you come here. You come here. If you want to be smart, you come here. By contrast, Bonobo males are commonly subordinate. Oh, shit. What I keep telling you, that the nature of the male is to submit to women. By contrast, Bonobo males are commonly subordinate to females and do not compete intensely for dominance rank. They can't. You know why? Because the females have neutralized the ass. The females have neutralized the male in the Bonobo community. Women could do this, but they too divided. They chasing penis. They chasing romance. And they hate their sister. You got light skin and dark skin fighting. It's the male who created goddamn racism. Divide and conquer is his goddamn nature because women are too fucking powerful. This is the reason why they had the Salem witch trials. This is the reason why they didn't want, they forbade you from preaching from from women being in the pulpit. They are afraid of groups and packs of women because you too damn powerful and you too stupid to see it. You scared, that's why. Because males have indoctrinated you with fear and you scared. You afraid. Afraid of what? The truth? You afraid to be free? You afraid of power? Huh? You afraid of power? Fear. Get rid of the shit. Get rid of it. They do not listen. By contrast, Bonobo males are commonly subordinate to females and do not compete intensely for dominance rank. They do not form alliances with one another and there is no evidence of lethal aggression between groups. Woo! Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. The reason that the reason that your daughters is being molested, the reason that you getting X'd and deleted is because you refuse to stand up and bond together and put masculine energy in chick like the Bonobos. You scared, ain't you? Yeah, you are. Mm-hmm. You afraid. 
Somebody sent me something. Somebody sent me something that I want to read. <sighs> oh, give me a second. I got to I got to read this if I can find it. Dang, I got too many people. Hold on. Oh, I got to I'm gonna have to put them in a uh your stomach hurt? Yeah. Okay, what you want me to do about it? You want me to rub your stomach? Okay. I'll I be right there with you, okay, mama? Okay. Hold on. Somebody sent me something. Hold on. I want to read it, right? Um. Yeah, I'm going to read it as soon as I find it, right? Oh, well... Well, uh, I want y'all to hear this, though. I, w I want you to hear this. I know y'all probably heard it, but somebody somebody sent this to me, right? This happened out here. In, this ha this happened out here in, in 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 Houston, right? This happened out here in Houston. While I'm looking for this, I really want to read this. So, give me a second, right? I do want you to hear this. According to the investigator, the bus driver stopped the bus because she thought they were fighting on the back of the bus, but this mother's child was fighting because he was being raped. Monroe says everything came to light last Tuesday when efforts to track down her son's missing backpack led school officials to look at surveillance video on the bus. Then she got a call. I get to the school and I find out that my son was sexually assaulted. Days of, of questioning, days of talking to my child, the details became more and more graphic each and every time. According to the investigator, the bus driver stopped the bus. Who, who, who was doing it? Huh? Who was doing it? Of course it was a male. Come on. Of course it was a male. Right? We scared, though. We scared, though. We scared though, right? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm telling you. Women, you are at fault for not standing up because the male is blaming you because he can't do no better than what he doing. It ain't in his nature. You want him to take responsibility and do something that he cannot do. Let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find. Oh, no wonder I can't find. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong thing. <laughs> That's why I'm in the wrong thing. Okay. So somebody sent this to me. And I'm going to get back to. Let me read this last thing so y'all don't forget where I was. Okay. By contrast, Bonobo males are commonly subordinate to females and do not compete intensely for dominance rank. They do not form alliances with another and there is no evidence of lethal aggression between the groups. So a lady sent me this. Study finds matriarchal societies are good for women's health. An isolated ethnic group in China maintains a, ma a matriarchal society, much to the benefit of their health. The, Musua, the, 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 Mos, the Masuo women were not only healthier than women living under patriarchy, but were healthier than men too. The findings support the idea that having a degree of autonomy and resource control is good for your health. This was the nature of women. The creator of all gave dominion over planet Earth to women and women never had to look for males for resources because they control the resources women are resource dependent they 
ain't fucking monog I mean hypergamous by nature. They resource dependent. And when you go in line with nature, which is matriarchal, mother earth, mother nature, the cosmic mother, you thrive. The world thrives and males are kept in check. Every debate about what is innate to humans and what is learned from society runs into the problem of having to rely on humans who live in some kind of society reference. Claims about human nature can easily be repackaged as claims about people living in similar cultures and vice versa. Current debates over sex, gender, and what behaviors are biologically influenced fall into this category. Claims that masculinity and femininity are biologically fixed often point to their seemingly universal universality as evidence. However, as mentioned, these claims often rely on people raised in cultures that encourage or discourage people from taking on those traits. It is a bit of a chicken and an egg problem. It ain't when you look into fucking nature to the wild. When you look into the wild that is devoid or absent of human interference, there you will get the unadulterated truth. You must look into that which is absent of human interference. One way to try and get around these problems is to find a culture that is markedly different from others. A new study on women's health has taken this route. It discovered that granting women autonomy, typically given only to men, leads to better health outcomes. The Masuo People are an ethnic group that lives in Yunnan and Sichuan regions of China next door to Tibet. Long isolated from other parts of China and insulated against the occasional upheavals and imp that impacted other cultures. They continue to maintain cultural institutions commonly described as matriarchal or matrilineal. Children take the name of their mother's family, who, li who they live with all their lives. Households are run by matriarchs. Often the grandmother and inheritance goes from mother to daughter. The matriarch makes all major household decisions, including financial ones, and women do work often doled out to men in other cultures. They are also known to practice a unique form of marriage known as walk-in marriage. In this system, a couple decides to carry on a relationship by mutual consent. They do not live together. Remaining in the homes of their respective families, the man instead walks over to the woman's house for romantic rendezvous. Men have to return home by sunrise. The relationship is carried on for as long as both parties want, but carries no social or economic obligations. It is ended at any time with little difficulty. Many people often confuse this with promiscuity, but most anthropologists report it is a kind of serial monogamy. And many relationships that take this form are long term. Any children resulting from these marriages are raised by the mother's family, though the father may play a role as agreed upon by all involved. Typically, the child's uncle will play the role of the father figure. Listen to me. I keep telling you that the nuclear family is bullshit and that the male is operating in a position that he wasn't naturally born to occupy. In this setup, the male operates at his capacity 
at his capability and they don't worry about it, whether he stay or go, because they all have the, it. The matriarchal system takes care of the damn child and the uncle played a role, right? The uncle played a role. So the male, it don't fucking matter what he do. You can go. Because this system is in line with nature. It don't fight against the wind of nature. It does not fight against the current. The male is only capable of doing so much. And he is happy to walk over there and have his little sex and go back home. He is happy to choose whether he want to play a part of the family uh, of the child's life or not. That's his fucking nature. And the nature of a woman is to commune and build bonds with other women. That's nature because it's mother earth, mother nature, cosmic mother. This whole universe is female dominated. And you are acting out of your nature. Because you believe in this bullshit. It is worth noting that men do have some power in this society. They are in charge of all things death related including funerals and the killing of animals. Listen, everything death related. Y'all hear that? Because the male, what did we just read in the other article? That the chimpanzee murder rate is comparable to the human murder rate. So guess what? The male represents death. You hear that? The male represents death. So he is in charge of all things death related because they are going in line with what? Nature. Uh, Let me pull out one of my, if you ain't a part of my book club, you should probably think about joining my book club. I'm going to give you all the game. I'm going to I'm 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 going to bring you into power. I'm going to eliminate that fear. I'm going to make you know, baby. Right? I'm going to bring you to a high level. If you join my book club, registration is open now. We got a good group of ladies there. Aesop's Fables, The Oak and the Reeds. An oak that grew on the bank of a river was uprooted by a severe gale of wind and thrown across the stream. It fell among some reeds growing by the water and said to them, How is it that you, who are so frail and slender have managed to weather the storm. Whereas I, with all of my strength, have been torn up by the roots and hurled into the river. You were stubborn, came the reply, and you fought against the storm, which proved stronger than you. But we bow and yield to every breeze. And thus the gale passed harmlessly over our heads. The reason y'all getting fucked up out here is because you acting like the oak. You're fighting against the wind. You're fighting against nature instead of going with the flow. And the flow tell you that males are not to be in long-term relationships with you. Males are not to live in the same house as you. Males are not to be treated like you. Males are not to have the same level of responsibility and obligation as you. But you're fighting against that instead of bowing with it. 
go with the flow. So the flow is that males are violent. Males represent death. So this matriarchal society in China, it is worth noting that men do have some power in this society. They are in charge of all things death related, including funerals. And the killing of animals. They also have some political power. Though women often have most of it. Cases like these are common among matriarchal societies. With men relating some measure of control over their lives, even if they aren't at the top, often unknown to women in patriarchal societies. A variety of sources indicate that the men in this society who are well aware of the alternatives are often content with their situation. I want y'all to hear that. Listen to this one more time. A variety of sources indicate that the men in this society who are very well aware of the alternatives are often content with their situation. Mosuo villages with patrilineal traditions also exist. What does it say with the Bonobos? By contrast, Bonobo males are commonly subordinate to females and do not compete intensely for dominance rank. They do not form alliances with one another and there is no evidence of lethal aggression between groups. The Mosuo tribe or village is indicative of a human Bonobo matriarchy. The true religion to this planet is nature, but we have done a 180 degree turn against nature, putting the male in charge and the creator so motherfucking cold that it gave you Two pieces of evidence to show you who you supposed to really be acting like. God is not the author of confusion, but man is. Stop listening to their ass and open your damn eyes. Open your eyes. Even with these caveats, it is fair to say that the women of the Mosuo are highly autonomous. Listen to this. They are highly autonomous and have a long history of personal freedom beyond that which is known to women in many other cultures. Most of you will know that women tend to outlive men. Fewer of you will know that women tend to have a higher morbidity than men do in spite of this. Two manifestations of this are that women tend to have higher blood pressure than men after reaching post-reproductive age. And that women of all ages tend to experience more inflammation than men. Both of these are important markers of long-term health and are commonly associated with other serious conditions. While these issues have been caulked up to biology, listen, while these issues have been often caulked up to biology, a team of researchers led by Adam Reynolds of the University of New Mexico set out to see if they also existed in the Mosuo society. 
The team recorded health measures in Mosuo individuals living in either a matrilineal or patrilineal society and compared them using statistical methods. The findings have been published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Levels of C-reactive protein, CRP, a biomarker that can indicate the presence of inflammation, were measured in the blood of 371 Mosuo participants. A mere 3.6 percent of the women living in the matriarchal areas were found to suffer from high inflammation levels unrelated to other conditions 3.6 y'all hear that 3.6 in the patriarchal communities the prevalence of chronic of chronic inflammation in women was 8.3% so in a patriarchal society the increase of inflammation jumped up from 3.6 to 8.3 percent you carrying patriarchal philosophies is killing you and you are proud to carry on this bullshit for male survival To get a hand clap from a male who using you as a token and sacrificing you for his own goddamn survival. What's wrong with you? Please tell me what the hell is wrong with you? Blood pressure test showed similar results after after nearly a thousand people were tested. Of the women living in a mate in matrilineal areas, only 25.6% had hypertension. A third of women in the comparison areas had the condition. A third. In a surprising find, not only did the Mosuo women living in the areas where they have control over their lives enjoy lower rates of these conditions than other women, but you sitting up here letting a motherfucker bully you talking about you going to die alone. That shit ain't your goddamn problem. That's his problem. Stop listening to these motherfuckers, right? Because all they doing is trying to bully you to sacrifice yourself so they 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 can exist you let them break you up from your home girls you let them bully you into staying married and getting rid of your single friends you about to wake wake up wake the fuck up believe nature fuck what they saying in the matrix the matrix ain't real Focus on the real. Right? Of the women living in matrilineal areas, only 25.6% had hypertension. A third of women in the comparison areas had the condition. In a surprising find not only did the most of women living in the areas where they have control over their lives enjoy lower rates of these conditions than other women they are healthier than men than their men as well most of men living in the matriarchal areas tested for high levels of crp at double the rate of women They also had more hypertension, though the rate was only slightly higher, 27.8%. Now, the men don't suddenly all have high blood pressure because they don't run everything. They don't run everything. They have high blood pressure at a rate of only 1% higher than those from patriarchal cultures. Y'all, y'all hear that? That male, that the male is wired 
with this deficiency, no matter if society is built around putting him up or not. Whether he live in a matriarchal or a patriarchal setup, his health is still the same. But for women, it's a drastic difference. A drastic difference. If there is an adverse health effect for them caused by living in a matriarchal society, it isn't much of one. Speaking to inverse, senior author C. O. Bond, or have you named his name, uh, Madison, explained their interpretation of the findings. Women in these matrilineal communities have a great deal of autonomy in decision-making and excellent social support, the same as the Bonobos, the same as the Bonobos. Given that women tend to be at greater risk of chronic disease worldwide, the fact that they actually do better than men in this realm of health is telling. The other authors of the study agree. They conclude that our data provide partial support for the hypothesis that the effect of matrilineal on women's health is associated with increased autonomy and resource control. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. What did I keep telling you? That the creator of all things gave women dominion over the planet and women are resource dependent by nature. They are not hypergamous. Hypergamy is a biological response to an artificial stimuli of resource deprivation shifted into the hands of the male, which is artificial, thus manipulating women's biological nature and forcing them to pursue men for resources, which is not fucking natural. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to pat myself on the back and say I'm a goddamn genius. <laughs> I don't need no motherfucking degree. I don't need no goddamn degree. I'm a professional master dot connector. I'm a master dot connector. Our hypothesis or our data provide partial support for the hypothesis that the effect of matrilineal on women's health is associated with increased autonomy and resource control. While patriline has been linked to reduced autonomy and resource access for women. I'm a motherfucking genius. Huh. I'm bad to the goddamn bone. Can't nobody tell me otherwise. We demonstrate that these inequalities can have tangible biological effects that contribute to gender disparities in health. There has been an all out assault on you by males and they made you fight to, to, to keep families together. That shit is unnatural. Ain't no goddamn such thing as no fucking nuclear family. That's bullshit. Nuclear family is a setup to make a place for males who wouldn't have a place otherwise. Compare with chimpanzees. Bonobos are playful throughout their lives and show intense sexual behavior. Bonobos are playful throughout their lives and show intense sexual behavior. 
males, this was exhibited in the nature of females before males came and conquered women. Women were having sex with each other. Lesbianism was a thing. And males came in and broke up the powerful bond created by women through their companionship and through the power of sex that kept them in control. They broke you up from that and made you ashamed of your sexuality because what did Napoleon Hill say? What did Napoleon Hill say? Sex is the most powerful, powerful energy on the entire planet. And women, like Bonobos, 98.7% shared DNA. 80% of women don't get orgasms through penetrative sex. 8,000 nerve endings in the clitoris. That's why they cut your shit off in, in, in some parts of Africa. Genital mutilation because they're trying to control the power within you. They're trying to control the power within you. That's why they, that's why they had the Salem witch trials and stoned them women from congregating because they know when women get together there's an intense motherfucking power that they can't goddamn conquer and you let them conquer you through penis and separating you made you demonize made you demonize your sexuality when studies show when studies show through fmri right functional functional mris of the brain, they show that the majority of women, what, are either gay or bisexual. Ain't, ain't no straight woman. But they bullied you into thinking that you was. They, 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 to keep you at the beck and call of males, they broke you up from the shit. Meanwhile, it's a bunch of women in the closet bumping coochies with another motherfucker, right? Right? That's what they doing, right? But they won't tell you. You can't lie about what your brain scans are showing. You can't lie about what your brain scans are showing. 98.7%. Shared DNA. Compared with chimpanzees, bonobos are playful throughout their lives and show intense sexual behavior. They made you ashamed of your sexuality, sweetheart. They made you try to covet virginity, which ain't natural in motherfucking nature. Ain't no goddamn such thing as virginity. Sexual behavior that serves non-conceptive functions and often involves same-sex partners. I'm a goddamn genius. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Priscilla, you bad bitch. You intelligent girl. Don't ever let nobody tell you you ain't the motherfucking shit. This is how I talk to myself. You better start talking to yourself like that. Priscilla, don't you ever let nobody tell you you don't know what the fuck you talking about, girl. You a bad bitch. I know it. I know it. I know it. Now, I just want you to know. This the first time I'm reading this shit. This I just pulled up one. I just pulled up one. Research. Long as it's a research paper. I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to play it. I'm going to read that again. Compare with chimpanzees. Which is male. Dominated. Bonobos are playful throughout their lives and show intense sexual behavior that serves non conceptive functions and often involves same sex partners. Thus, chimpanzees and bonobos each possess certain characteristics that are more similar to human traits than they are to one another's. 
no parsimonious reconstruction of the social structure and behavioral patterns of the common ancestor of humans, chimpanzees and bonobos is therefore possible. That that ancestor may in fact have possessed a mosaic of features, including those now seen in Bonobo, chimpanzee, and human. To understand the evolutionary relationship of Bonobos, chimpanzees, and humans better, we sequenced and assembled the genome of a female Bonobo individual and compared it to those of chimpanzees and humans. Compared with six, six X Sanger sequenced ch chimpanzee genome the, genome, the Bonobo genome assembly has a similar number of bases in alignment with the human genome. Hmm. A similar number of lineage specific substitutions and similar ideal error rates suggesting that the two eight genomes are of similar quality segmental duplication effect at least 80 i don't know what that stand for mb i don't know what that stand for of the bonobo genome according to excess sequence red depth predictions Owning to over collapsing of duplications, only 14.6 MB are present in the final assembly. I meant to go uh, elucidate in my mind exactly what that means to translate that into um, into what layman's terms. I'm gonna figure that out after the show, not right now, but. Anyway, a common error seen in assemblies from shorter read technologies. We use the finished chimpanzee sequence of, uh, of chromosome 21 together with the human genome sequence to estimate an error rate of approximately two errors per 10 KB in the Bonobo gen genome. Okay, that, that, that's, that, that's their process. That's their process. Let me see if I can just get down to the conclusion, if they got a conclusion. Um, It's a bunch of stuff here. Like, I can read that, but I think I read the most important. I mean, all this is important. Don't get me wrong. It's all important. But the, the main thing that I really wanted to hit on was exactly what was shared there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm, I am trying to see if um, this research paper has a conclusion that um, I can read. No, it ends at... It ends at method summary. What a, this is the methods. I just wanted the ultimate conclusion. Anyway, I think that was good enough. I think that was good enough. All right. Let's get the likes up. Okay. Hey, y'all. Okay. I think I done put out. I think I done put out exactly what was intended to be put out right and so what i want y'all to do is hit me on the phone and tell me what you think right make sure y'all supporting the show make sure y'all get the likes up hit me with some super chats and and make sure you subscribe and share this with some people that you want to save their lives because we need to save some people's lives baby uh, yeah okay all right let me let me let me put my my phone number up there oh before i do but let me before i um before i put my phone number up there um let me go ahead with the announcements, right? If you knew, right, and you hearing me with this empowerment stuff, listen to me. Y'all need to check out my book, The Five Components of Love, right? You've been led to believe love is a feeling. And I got, I'm telling you that men are not capable of love, and I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt they have no capability of even loving you, right? 
You think that old bullshit ass feeling that you get is love? You think that a motherfucker doing something nice for you is love? Huh, I got news for you, sweetheart. That ain't love. Love has a specific structure, and it's of five components. And without these five components, baby, ain't no love there. Hey? I think you might want to learn what that is so that way you can learn to love yourself. Because when you try to love yourself, it ain't about a feeling, is it? No, it ain't about no damn feeling. It ain't about butterflies. So how you going to butterfly yourself? Please tell me how you going to butterfly yourself. All right? Check that book out. You can get that at princellathequeenmaker.com, right? Next. Next. If you haven't pre-ordered my book, it's on pre-order right now. It's called The Game, 41 Shades of Men, What Men Pursue and Use You For. After you learn what love is, then you learn that ain't no man pursuing you to love you. And you ain't going to get no love out of him. But you can figure out what the hell he want from you and how he going to use you and how to stay one step or five steps ahead of the game to, to protect yourself. Show you what they look like, give you their personality type and the game for each and every last one of them. You might want to get this on pre-order. Eh? I'm going to give you the whole game. If you get played in life after this, you deserve to get played. Point blank, period. If you get played after reading this book, you deserve to get played for the rest of your life. And don't come calling me. Don't come asking me nothing because I'm ain't. i going to charge you now a lot because I don't got time to hear the shit after I done gave you the game. Man. Next. My workshop that I do once a quarter, once or twice a quarter, Right. I, I used to call it the five components of love workshop, but now I got a better name for it. Right. Love and manip love men and ma uh, manipulation decoded love men and manipulation decoded. Right. It's a one day workshop It's about five or six hours long. Right. March 18th. I got it going on. I'm going to prove to you how love is made up how it operates and how it rhythms and how to use love to see some of y'all really do believe love is blind let me tell you something sweetheart love is not blind if you have ever been blind at any point baby girl you was not in love ain't no such thing as falling in love somebody lied to you sweetheart there is no such thing as falling in love and if your ass is blind it is not because you in love. Ain't no love there. Because love see everything. Love see everything. And I can show you and prove to you and I can show you how to use love to decode and see through people. See straight through people. All right? I'm going to show you how love protects you. So you might want to sign up to that workshop. It's going to be virtual. March 18th, all right? And if you want to join my book club, my book club is open for registration. We got a gr good group of women there, and it's all about personal development and digging further into this whole thing, and I'm going to put you right back. I'm going to give you the tools to put you right back where you belong, and then we're going to have... As this grows, we're building a network that'll help you build resources within the group, right? Connections and all that stuff. We're going to be, girl, we're going all over the doggone nation. The entire nation. So you want to become a part of the community, all right? Now, now I'm going to put my phone number up there. Call and tell me what you think. Call and tell me what you're thinking. 832-627-6575. I would love to hear from you tonight. I did good tonight. We had two hours and 30 minutes. I did really well. Let's see. See how long it takes people to call. Doom, doom, doom. Oh, good. Unknown Wait. caller. Hello, who 
am I speaking with? Hi, it's um, Nitty. I go by uh, NMN. On, on, I'm with you every Friday. Yes, ma'am. I be so, seeing you there. <laughs> so I be thinking so deep about everything that you say. Um, and I'm like connecting the dots too. So you know how you always talk, you always say with the male nature, with the testosterone aggression, the sex driven, and all and all of that. And then you had mentioned before about how patriarchy and religion has basically put man in front of, well, males in front of female and created the cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm like putting these dots together and I'm thinking, because like you say, they natural conquerors and destroyers. So with the crime rate, because I'm a Gen X, I'm 1966. So I've seen a lot of change Mm -hmm. from when I can remember all the way back to, you know, when I was seven or eight up until now. Um, and it's, it's almost as if these males are coming out of their cognitive dissonance because, because women started getting resources, you know, when they went off to war, like you said, they went off to war and us women had to work and we're creating businesses and all that. So the male is failing and like coming out of their cognitive Oh no, they're not no they no not they're not they're not coming out of cognitive dissonance. They're deep in it. That's what's causing the violence. The cognitive dissonance. Well, yeah, so. that's 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 kind of well, the way I was thinking is like they coming out of the cognitive dissonance and going back into their nature, mm -mm, their natural mm -mm, state, mm -mm. which is conquering. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Cognitive dissonance is what creates anger. Hey, whoever's calling me from Minnesota or I mean Minneapolis, I keep telling you, I keep sending you a text message that I will call you back. This is a cell phone. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> You're in line. I will call you back. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, no. Cognitive dissonance is a result of your illusion or your strongly held beliefs being impacted being impacted by reality creating a negative feeling which drives up anger which and once anger is driven up males attack so they're not coming out of it cognitive dissonance is creating the drive for them to act in their nature because uh, testosterone triggers the amygdala right making them mm -hmm. angry so anger drives up testosterone right and what is making the male angry the fact that his illusion is coming down can you stop call can y'all stop calling me please if you have already called and i have sent you a text message i sent you a text message that i will call you back Please do not flood my line while I'm in the middle of talking. This is a cell phone. I know y'all hear this. It's a cell phone. And I know y'all getting a text message that say, I will call you back. If you, I got two people, keep calling. Stop. And now if you call back, I'm going to assume you a troll that's ignoring what I'm telling you and I will block you. chill call when nobody's on the line and if you do call let me call you back please okay mm -hmm. all right so um so i guess like i guess I, i'm i guess wording it wrong like i'm saying they're coming out of it but in reality it's being broken the cognitive dissonance. 
No. And that's why they're getting mad. Yeah, no, it's it's because it, crime rate is like no, it's 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 it's, it's, in encur it's encouraging. You got to know what cognitive dissonance is. Here's the thing: if you believe in Jesus Christ so strong, and that's your strongly held belief, and then I show you facts that show you that Jesus is not real, mm -hmm. that information is going to clash with your strongly held belief and make you feel uncomfortable and you will get angry eventually at the information that you're being presented with. The fact of the matter is, is males believe that they are superior. They believe that women ain't can't do certain things that men can do, but the reality that they see out there is showing them that what they believe ain't right and what they see is something different than what they believe. And that's making them angry because they're what they believe they're seeing is a lie, but they don't know how to fight against it. So they're getting angry as a result of reality clashing with they strongly held beliefs. So they're not coming out. They're not coming out of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is creating the anger that's driving up the testosterone and men are more likely to attack the target of their anger. And on top of that, when women leave them, men feel physical, men feel physical uh, pain when women leave, which makes them more angry, which makes them more painful. And they want to stop it because males don't know how to control their emotions. So, mm -hmm. so patriarchy putting all this pressure on males that they are not created to handle is making these dudes go crazy. And women, in spite of seeing this shit, they still keep getting in relationships with men instead of leaving them, leaving their ass alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the. It's like everything you see on the news is males killing, males raping, males this, males that. I mean, the majority, not, you know, seven out of ten articles is always a male, often a woman. And it's like they just kind of like. As a collective, they're 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 like serial killers because they keep fucking killing the women that they met that the women you know that they dated in are married to husbands killing their kids and it's just crazy i, I stay by myself mm -hmm. i'm not dealing with them yeah but here's the thing you need to form alliances with women yeah uh, yeah women don't need to be by themselves or independent or, or alone or isolated they need to to put all of this shit down and just get back in commune with each other and support each mm -hmm. other that's what they need to do yeah because once i get once i i get out of texas i'm i'm moving with my family which are majority is female mm -hmm. and we're doing stuff together so we can grow old together and take care of each other yes yeah yeah but keep doing what you're doing and you're going to be changing the world. Thank you. Sooner or later. Hopefully it's going to be in my lifetime. And hopefully I'll see it if I be able to grow old into my 80s and 90s. Like my mom and my grandmother and my aunt before they all pass. And hopefully I can see a, a new beginning for my granddaughters. Yes, indeed. I hope so, too. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. <laughs> all right. Bye. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Hello? Hello, who am I speaking with? You're speaking with Sheila. Hey, how you doing, Sheila? I'm good, how are you? I'm excellent. What you got for us tonight? Listen, I was following you a while back on TikTok and... <laughs> Lately, you have landed on my YouTube page, mm -hmm. and I have fallen into your rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's a good thing. It's great. And I, I've been watching your, your live today. I finally caught a live today. Mm -hmm. And just before you kind of shut off, 
there was some some words you shared and my daughter and I were like kind of listening to it and mm-hmm. I was like you know what I didn't call in today mm-hmm. and what I wanted to share today was when I first got married I had this idea of this whole Disney princess <laughs> mm-hmm. you know mind frame mm-hmm. but as we've gone into it 15 years into it it's like sometimes I wake up or go to bed and I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right. What am I doing? Yeah. Um, I was the one that left that message that um, the universe gave me a door when my mother was leaving. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of on my own right now because I'm in the States. Most of my family on my mother's side is in, in Africa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm I'm just happy I found your platform because there's a lot that that is resonating with me and has like it's something I've always thought about but never really understood how to how to implement, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just happy I found your platform and oh my god, you called me back. Oh my god. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> I'm fangirling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. I live in the states now. I've lived on three different continents and it's a lot. <laughs> Living in America has has opened my eyes to a lot of things, mm-hmm. but your platform, thank you. Thank you for doing it. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad and I'm thankful that y'all are getting a lot out of it. I appreciate it. Oh, yes. You are. You are awesome. Thank you. Make sure you tell your loved ones, your friends and family and all of that and and help grow the channel. Oh, oh, can I swear? I'm sorry. Yes. (laughs) I've been been sharing your stuff all day. There was a moment in the, oh, gosh, the, uh, what's her name? Shahad, whatever her name, Ali, whatever. There was a moment that you said something. Uh Uh-huh. I had to take a screenshot and I've been sharing that shit all day. (laughs) I was dying. Yeah, <laughs> I was dying. I was dying. I was dying. <laughs> but I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good night. You too. All right. Bye. All right. Hello. Hello. Who am I speaking with? Oh, you speaking with Najib from Minneapolis? What are y'all? What are y'all? It's going hey, on. Hey, what are y'all? How are you? <laughs> I'm excellent, yeah, man. I, 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 I'm from Minneapolis and I support you, Priscilla. And I have two daughters and I love what you be talking about. And that's, that's all I want to say. I support you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah, keep doing what you're doing. I support you, baby. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you later. You're welcome. Yep. All right. Bye. Yo. All right. Real good. Real good. Anybody else want to hit me up before we, before we jet up out of here? Before we jet out of here? Let's see. Let's see. Let me, let me make sure <laughs> I hit up. Everybody who showed me, hit me with a cash app, right? Okay, we got Starlight Empress hit me with $40. Thank you. She said, thank you for bringing us back to life. Renita Crawford, $20. When I start slipping, you always snatch me up. I know you ain't falling for no penis. Girl, I know you ain't out there falling for no penis. Don't tell me you're falling for the penis. All right. Do I need to come snatch you up, girl? Do I need Renita, do I need to come snatch you up to keep you away from that penis? Come on now. Malika, right? Five dollars to the cash app. Thank you. And Ebony, ten dollars to the cash app. I appreciate you. And make sure y'all make sure y'all support your girl. Come on, make sure y'all throw it in there because you know what? I'm saving lives, right? 
if you want to be a part, don't take this information and then go off by yourself. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you get this information, when you get this information, uh-oh, unknown caller, New York City, New York City. New York, New York. Who am I talking to? <laughs> this is Shaniqua. I'm from New York. Okay, what's up, girl? Can you turn your TV down in the background? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm about to hit the mute button. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. I just want to say thank you, my love. Because you just, you know, I be going through stages where I'm getting lonely and I, I be wanting some type of affection from a man. But then I just, remember listening to you and listening to all your content i'm just like you know what i have to like smack myself out of it you know what i'm saying i have to really like shake my ass up out of it i got three daughters i'm raising i don't got no son unfortunately mm-hmm. which is fine no you know you, you <laughs> better it's be like, happy you ain't got no son because <laughs> you, you're gonna have a hell of a day girl be blessed right the, i am yeah the creator I am. is a woman i am i got two <laughs> nephews and one of them, he already doing the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know I got an older brother, and those are his two sons. And you know he he be trying to compare me to him, and I be like, first of all, I'm not a man. I'm not trying to be a man. <laughs> right. Okay. So don't put me in that category. Just because I'm a single mother, don't mean I have to emasculate my stuff. I, I still like to be a feminine woman, regardless of what. They try to put a single mother in the category of, oh, we got to be masculine. We doing all, all, all this stuff to be a single mom. Right. No. I keep men away from my daughters. Period. As no man should. is allowed to even be in my house around my kids. I do not play that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not interested in putting my daughters in any type of situation where I got to choose a man over my kids. It ain't going to happen. And then on top of that. I grew up in New York, you know what I'm saying? So it's real out here. It's fast. You right. know, the city is fast. A lot of things happen very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like a lot of parents, they want to give th- their children this fairy tale lifestyle and feed them all these fairy tales. And it's like, stop. Like, stop doing that. Sometimes right. you got to keep it above with your kids because they're going to grow up. Right. And my daughters is currently 14 and 16 years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I have to make sure I keep their head on straight so they don't get trapped in a wrong situation dealing with some little knucklehead little boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? No no pregnancy scares. None of that. If anything, my daughters like girls. Right. Which you should. And I'm, I'm not mad. I'm <laughs> saying you, 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 you better be glad. You better I be am. glad. Cause I am, and watching you, you really helped me. You really helped me because I was like, "Oh, my daughter is like, nah, nah, ain't nobody gonna give me like no grant." They was like, "Um, yeah." I don't, my daughter was like, "Uh, she is icky. She it, the thought of a boy doing something to her is icky." So I said, "Okay, hey, keep it like that. Keep mm-hmm. it like that. <laughs> stay, right. stay, stay in that mind frame." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, I just really appreciate you, and I'm just, I, I just hope you keep going. I'm glad someone like you decided to actually put this information out here because everything that you're saying i've been seeing it i've been seeing it from the sidelines i'm always the quiet girl in the background watching the scenery watching people move Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying everything that's going on now it ain't nothing new right it's just getting more intense because men are actually verbalizing what they really be thinking of beside their head this ain't nothing new right they've been doing this for decades right from the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. They've been silencing us and making us, you know, keeping us out of their conversations so they don't, so we don't know. Right. But now that we in the conversation, we actually, y'all, y'all actually hearing what they actually think about mm-hmm. and what actually run through their mind and how they move. Right. They're abusive, they're manipulative, they're calculating, they, they disturb everything. Right. And I got two brothers and having conversations with them. Ugh. Right. But thank you. That's all I wanted to say. I, I appreciate you so much. And I will be joining the book club and I will be trying to get to that um, your seminar in March. Yes. So 
Thank you and good night, my love. Thank you. You good night. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So, so here's the thing. What you when you get this information, ladies, for a long time you're gonna be isolated. Because a lot of y'all got pick me friends. You got you got women that's got men or males and they they addicted to them. And they ain't listening to you. So you're going to start seeing yourself be separated from the, the general public. And you're going to feel isolated. And once you start feeling isolated, you need to know that you ain't isolated. You got a whole community of women right here that are literally on the same frequency. All you need to do is join the, join the damn group. Right? That's all you got to do. Right? Women who think the same, who are on the same frequency of personal development, come where they at, right? And that's, that's in the book club. That's in the uh, Wednesday lives, right? We're going to be doing some shit outside of this doggone platform too, right? And we got to start setting up chapters and spaces in each one of these cities we're gonna start with them we're gonna start with major cities right so that we we, we, can, we can all come you right because when shit hit the fan baby you got you got to have somewhere to go man and a, the males ain't gonna protect you trust me they not they so happy to tell you they can't wait to do something to you right they can't they they so happy let's see I be, I be screenshotting so many things that males say. But they can't wait to shit hit the fan so they can rape you. So they can break into your house and take your food and, and, and take your kids. I want you to understand. That's what they waiting on. They waiting on there to be no law so they can show you why you need them. To show you that they going they gonna run you. Well, baby, you got the power when you got a group of women, right? And we all trained in in weapons and in that power that you that you have among you, right? Man, playtime is over, yo. Y'all don't see how sky high these prices getting? You don't see what they doing to the housing market? Baby, stop playing. And get back to your nature as woman. Y'all see them. It, it went viral that some white women, four of them, had bought a house together and got in there and raised, started raising their kids together. Two other women did the same thing. Baby, that's your nature. And, the, and, and this shit is pushing you to go back to your nature, but you resisting. You resisting. Stop resisting. Right? Join the book club. Either jo either join the book club, join the, the Wednesday lives, join something over here where you got access to other women, yo. Cause that's what you need. Now, last call for phone. Last call for somebody who wanna call the line. 832-627-6575. This if you don't want to call, right, and that's it. Then I'm gonna roll the credits. Yeah, I got credits. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the credits on the next screen for everybody who uh, threw some in the super chat, right? On the screen. Going once. There we go. Woo! Unknown caller. Priscilla on the line. Who's, who's, who's speaking? Hi, this is Joey England. Hey, how you doing, Joey? What you got for us tonight? I'm fine. Um, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, I can't even really express how appreciative I am of all of this. I had come across your message in the past, mm -hmm. and I had went by it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, ear ready to hear. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I didn't agree with your message. I think... I was just 
not ready to kind of understand that I had to make moves and I wasn't in my feminine nature so that I could make those moves and actions that need to be made right. so I could take responsibility. And coming back to it and finding you and going through all your shorts and all your videos and realizing, oh, better than 95% of everything she said, you've said. Mm -hmm. And I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. I can't imagine a better person for this. You, you're definitely doing the job. Thank you. That so needs to be done. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. My, um, I, anecdotally, um, my family has said I hated men my entire life. Mm -hmm. Sexuality aside, they've said that. And it wasn't that I hated men. It was that I, I was disgusted with the behavior. I was raised in Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. And the behavior that was around me was so chaotic and so violent that it was hard to kind of understand it. I was having trouble understanding it and I separated myself. You know, I, I, they called me stuck up a lot mm -hmm. because of it, because I just didn't want to deal with the males that were hanging on my street corner in the middle of the night when I have to go to work the next morning. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just a rough time, but being here among these women, it makes me feel validated that I was always correct. There is something wrong. And that we women have to take that responsibility, not the responsibility men are trying to place on us where we're just maids, but the responsibility of shaping the future, because if we don't, we're not going to have one. Exactly. And I, I am so grateful to you for what you're doing. And I will be joining you if you need a chapter in uh, Pacific Northwest. I will, I will happily hold down a chapter here as well. Okay, so. great. <laughs> well, well, make sure you send me an email to Princella at PrincellaLittleQueenMaker dot com, so that way I have your I sure will. on contact. Yeah, I sure will. No problem. Thank you so much for tonight. It's been wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. -bye. I'm excited. I'm excited. Right. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to my I'm gonna get to my assistant that's helping me create this discord community and I'm going to tell her to put a few major cities in there. Right. That way we can get a, have people fill out a form to, to join and where they are and their proximity to one of the major cities. And then we're going to put them in separate groups that we'll have a group for everybody. And then we'll also have a group for each one of these major cities. So people know who they are in proximity to. So that way they can, that they, y'all can commune and get with, with each other. You can commune with everybody and that way, you know, where people are. So when you get ready to go and travel to another city, you can reach out into that specific city's group and be like, Hey, uh, I'm in, I'm, I'm coming there. Right. Y'all know that y'all together. Right. Um, what I'm, yeah, y'all know that y'all, you know, are, are together. So it's, it's easier that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, um, uh, I guess I'll pick, uh, I guess I pick 10 major cities. Yeah. We'll pick 10 major cities all around the country. And, um, we could talk about proximity and all that. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. That's gonna be nice. That's gonna be nice. I think that I think that'll be good. Y'all think that's a good idea? I think it is. Right? I think it is. All right. And that way, that way we can we can better establish different things in in these cities. So we know how many we definitely know how many people are gonna show up to certain stuff, all kind of stuff. So I think this is gonna be a good thing. Right? I think that's going to be a good thing. So, yeah, um, going, going once, going twice. Anybody else want to call? And I'm going to read y'all a bit a good night because it is 1159. And I think we have done a wonderful job tonight. I think this is one of my best shows. I, I did a lot of best shows. I ain't going to lie. Right. I did a lot of best shows. <laughs> but I think this one was a hell of a good one. <laughs> I think this was a hell of a good one. I hope y'all really see. You should really see it now. If your ass don't see it, then you, you fucking Ray Charles and this motherfucker if you can't see it now. <laughs> look, though, I'm out. Stick around for the credits. Let's see what these credits look like. Oh, wait. Well, here we go. Unknown caller. Saved by the bell. Hello. Who am I speaking with? 
Master P. What's Peace, up? love, peace, salutations, all the good stuff. This Jasmine Tanil. Hey, what's good? What you got for me tonight? Man, I've been in and out because, you know, I work on Fridays. And every time, they, man, you done drop so much juice tonight. Like, it was so good for my soul and refreshing. And I want you to know that. I really did. I want you to know that it hit. And, like, uh, it was certain points that you was making that made me wonder about, like, if the male species is an actual parasite, uh, I'm going to make some notes after I hit the replay. And the next show, I got some real good questions for you. Okay. I just didn't know that. All right. I appreciate it. I love you. And love you, too. Thanks. Bye. I love peace, love. Bye. Bye. Okay. Let me get that last call. Princella? Hey, who am I speaking with? This is Rocky out of Detroit, Michigan. Detroit in the house. What we got tonight, Rocky? So, Miss Princella, I just want to give you your flowers. Um, you come with the education. You come with the receipts. Um, I'm just, I'm definitely in the indoctrin indoctrination, and I'm waking up um, to the nature of men. Um, I've been misled for a long time, and um, I just want to give you the flowers for the education. I, I can't find this type of information um, anywhere, especially coming from a woman's point of view. And just the real, you, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. So I don't got too much to say. I know you um, ending your show, but want to give you your flowers, lady. Thank you. I surely appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you have a good night. Keep doing what you're doing. It, it's so needed. It's so needed. Thank you. I appreciate it. You do the same. Thank you. Bye. I love it. Ain't nothing like, ain't nothing like having having your flowers. Did somebody ask for my PO box? Yeah. If you if you asking for my PO box is PO box six two seven nine five. You want to send me something? It's six two seven nine five. Houston, Texas, 77205. Yes. P.O. Box 62795, Houston, Texas, 77205. Right? I put a lifetime worth of work into learning all of this stuff. Life made me learn this stuff. I am so appreciative for going to school for cell and molecular biology. I'm glad I went to college, right? I'm glad I joined the military. I'm glad I lived on the streets. I'm glad I endured all this shit, right? I love it because look what it has produced. Look what value I'm giving back to society. Society is woman, right? Planet Earth is woman, and our nature is to add value. We are born with value, and we give value, right? And the more you give, the more you receive, right? Unknown caller. Because that's the laws of nature. Hello, who am I speaking with? Hello, hello, hello. Speaking to the How you doing? I'm excellent. I, I, can you, I don't know, just say that again because you sound a little muffled. I want to make sure I hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Oh, let me catch my breath. Hold on. I just want to say that through applied behavior analysis and the function of behavior, I have learned to put together the things that you are saying in my own way. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you so much for that. Like, I've always been an activist or a revolutionary in my own way. And you've given me the fuel to like really push what I've been learning all my life mm -hmm. and give it back to women in a way that we so desperately need. Mm -hmm. And that's been a motivation of mine all my life, given the relationship I've had with my mother, with my grandmother, all the women in my family, I couldn't figure out why we couldn't come together. 
mm-hmm. when that clearly seemed to be the issue. Mm-hmm. The issue was the male centeredness. I received so many dreams about this, but like I said, I didn't know how to apply it. Mm-hmm. And I've been studying this behavior all my life. And you just get a new tools, the fuel. I'm in Baltimore. I'm in the DMV for real. So DC, Maryland, Virginia, you ready to start this chapter? I'm ready to get to it. Like for real. Wonderful. Okay. Make sure you send me an email to Princella at Princella the Queen com. Right. If you all in major cities, all y'all send the email. So I know what major cities we looking at so I can get to my discord assistant and we can create these channels for each one of these cities. And then we'll know when it's time to start doing tours and and setting up workshops and all that stuff in these cities. How many people we going to have coming and who we can commune with and all that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate you deeply, and I love you. Thank you. Love you, too. Have a great night. You, too. All right, bye-bye. bye-bye. I love it, y'all. I love it. This is going to be a great thing that we're doing, y'all. This is going to be a wonderful thing. All right? So y'all help me. Y'all help me help this. Y'all help me grow this thing. It's all going to benefit you, right? It's, it's about benefiting life nurturing life sustaining life and all of that i look forward to seeing y'all stick around for these these credits let's see how it look okay this is the first time i'm be able to do it so let's go to the next scene credits okay okay hold on we got the credits coming let's see if they come up there Oh, look at that. I'm going to slow that down so everybody can see their name. I like them credits. We're going to put some music behind that. Y'all, look at them credits. Thank you for supporting the stream, Super Chats, Janetta Miller, Mary Chance, Jay Jackson, Ohima Afwa, new member, Joy and Coco TV. Thank you. It's been wonderful. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.